Welcome to the BH Facilities Podcast. And now here's our host, Robbie Parker. All right, again, I want to thank everybody for attending today's webinar. Today we are going to be talking uh, about Smart Operations Manager, and we're going to be talking about uh, assets. Uh, I am going to go ahead and preface this by I am probably sometime during this webinar going to use the term site plan. <laughs> and site plan is no longer site plan. It is uh, called Smart Operations Manager. So I'm going to do my best to call it Smart Manager uh, and stay away from site plan, but inevitably I will probably call it site plan. So again, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day to go through this kind of refresher class. I will tell you that if it, you know, we're going to cover a lot um, of uh, right items here. today. Um, we're going to cover a lot of items today. And um, we do have training in BH uh, University uh, that will go into detail. Uh, probably a lot more than I'm going to cover, uh, things like the Yardy, the PO process, things of that nature. So if don't feel bad if you kind of get lost or we go too fast. I'll try and keep it slow. I'll take breaks, ask questions. I want to make sure that everyone understands the whole process um, because it, it is, um, I don't want to say complicated, but uh, it, it's detailed. Okay. And I'm going to cover as much of that as I possibly can. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, the big thing is the, the why. Why do we have to track assets? So I'm going to give you a little insight into that. We're going to take, and I'm not going to go through every single detail in the policy, but I'm going to give you highlights of the policy. What are the main things that you need to know about our policy? We're going to talk about when is the best time to create an asset. Um, we'll cover that kind of extensively. What is best practices? Also, the day that it's installed, when you put an air handler or a condenser in, what does that look like? We're going to talk about warranty tracking, uh, which is a powerful tool in, in the hands of our service uh, technicians and service managers now because we never had this before. And I'll talk about that in detail and what that looks like. And then at the end of the day, as a service manager or a community manager, how can I look on my dashboard and see or update statuses to know is everything in there have we got everything covered so that's kind of what to expect today i will also break away from this powerpoint and i will go into site uh there we go smart manager um and uh do a desktop version of how to create an uh, asset and also too i'm going to do my best to try and switch over to my iPad and show you what it looks like on mobile. Okay. I'll, I'll let you know too what you can do on your mobile app and what you have to do on the desktop. So you can't, there's some things you can't do on your mobile device. So we'll cover that. So hopefully all that will go smooth and well. So let's start off and talk about the why. Why do we even have to track assets? On January 1st of last year, 2023, the Department of Energy went uh, put a new uh, effect in governing HVAC efficiency standards. Okay, what does that mean? Basically, you've seen those yellow stickers that's on TVs, appliances that give you an energy rating. Well, basically, the DOE came in and said, we're going to bump up the SEER rating. We're going to make things more efficient starting in January 1st of 2023. So everything in the South is going to go bump up to 15 SEER. Everything in the North is going to go to 14 SEER. Okay. So they basically said, we're going to bump up one SEER and we're going to make sure um, that we're uh, creating more energy efficient equipment. Okay. So we're going to talk about compliant and non-compliant equipment. Non-compliant equipment would be putting a 13 sear in where you're required to put a 14 sear. Okay. So just keep in mind that we have to put in 15 sear in the south and the north is 14 sear equipment. That's what the Department of Energy said. Okay. 
So in addition to creating energy efficiencies with the equipment, they also made this statement. Dealers, contractors, distributors, and manufacturers will be required to track the model and serial numbers of equipment sold, delivered, and installed. Here's the kicker, as well as de delivered address and installation locations. So this is not a Robbie requirement. This is not a BH requirement. This is a Department of Energy requirement that says from now on, Beginning January 1st of 2023, when you install a, p a piece of equipment, an air handler or condenser, you have to document the physical location of where you put it in. So if the DOE comes to uh, BH and says, we want to see all your documentation of all the new units you've put in, that's why we track it in site plan is to be able to pull that type of reporting and give it to the Department of Energy and say, here's where all our new equipment went. OK, so hopefully that's the why behind what we do. Here's the important part. The minimum fine for installing non-qualifying equipment is $500 per day per unit. OK, what does that mean? If you installed a non-qualifying unit on August 7th last year and the DOE came to me today and said, let me see your documentation, and it was a 13 SEER and it should have been a 14 SEER, that's $500 a day times 365 days, which is a $182,500 fine. That's why it's important. It can get very expensive very quick, okay? So let's start taking a look at actual policy, okay? So when a new HVAC asset is installed, the service team member will inspect the asset to ensure it's installed property. Just make sure that all the installs, all your disconnects are done correctly, all the wiring, uh, all your refrigeration lines, make sure it's installed correctly. That goes for contractors as well. Who is ultimately responsible for the asset being entered? It's the service manager. But we need to work together as service managers and community managers to get that information in there. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But we got to work together. But ultimately, per policy, it's the service manager's responsibility. OK, but we're going to share that responsibility here in a little bit. Here is the main thing I want you to understand. When using outside contractors to install HVAC systems, the service manager is still responsible for entering that asset. So you may be contracting out all your ACs. That's great. It is still your responsibility that once that contractor is done with that installation, that you go and you get that information. Okay. So now let's talk about some details in the policy. Here is the actual air handler uh, policy. I, I, I'm, it, everybody can see what the details are. It's in the policy, but there's things I want to point out. To be able to create any asset, the minimum requirement is you have to have the type and you have to have the place. Where is it going? You cannot even create an asset unless you have those two. And I'll show you live what I mean by that. But you have to have those two things. Okay, so for an air handler too, also there are two tags required. What is a tag? It's basically more detailed information about that equipment other than it's just an air handler. One being, is it a heat pump, mini split, package unit, PTAC? What's, what kind of unit is that? Okay, the second tag is, I need to know what the heat source is. Is it electric, gas, or water? Okay, so those are key things. And again, I don't wanna to go too fast, but we're gonna create one and I'll show you what this looks like. But just remember, air handlers have two tags. Now let's look at condensers, same thing, same requirement with all of this information again you have to have a type, which is gonna be a condenser. 
in a unit number to even create the asset. It won't allow you to, okay? But condensers only have one tag and that tag is, what is the refrigerant type? Is it R, uh, 407C, MO99, R22? And we, we've also got other refrigerant here because next year we're gonna be changing refrigerants again, okay? So it, uh, just tell me what type of refrigerant that is used, okay? So let's talk about when is the best time to create the asset? You can obtain all but four pieces of information to create an asset when you create the PO. So as I mentioned earlier, that yes, the service manager is responsible ultimately for entering the asset. But we know, you know, day to day on site, our service team members are busy and sometimes it's the community managers that may be doing the POs, okay? Best practice, whoever creates the PO should go ahead and go into smart manager and create the asset. So when you create the PO, create the asset, okay? Why would we do that? Because I'm gonna show you all but four pieces of information can be found when you create the PO. So in your PO, you're gonna have the PO number. You're gonna have the supplier, which is HD supply. You're gonna have the order date, okay? So there's three pieces of information just in that piece. Now let's look and see how much more you can find out of the PO. You can get the unit number. It, it's not required but I would highly recommend entering your unit number so that you can track them. If you look in the description, look how much information you can get. It's a Goodman. Now you know the manufacturer, you know the size, it's a 4.0. You know the refrigerant, it's an R410A and it's a heat pump, okay? You have your GL account and you have your pricing. You see how much information you can uh, get just by uh, creating that when you create uh, the PO. So remember, best practice, where the service manager is entering the PO, community manager is, is entering uh, the PO, whoever is doing that should be creating the asset. And we're going to walk through how to do that. And it's, it's fairly straightforward. So you have all of this information in front of you. Okay, so that's why we say when you create the PO, create the asset. So let's talk about when you install the equipment. Remember I said there was four pieces of information that are required that you can't get from the PO, okay? So the first is take a picture of the data plate, okay? Why? We're all busy. You may have five units to do a day, or you may have five units to do in a month. It doesn't matter. If you take a good, clear picture of that data plate, you can go back into your office and you have all of that information in front of you in a picture, okay? So that is one requirement. Take a clear picture of the data plate. The model number is up here, okay? It's going to vary by manufacturer. I'm just giving this as a Mitsubishi uh, piece of equipment. This is where it's located. So you're going to need the model number. You're also going to need the serial number. You're not going to have that on a PO. You're not going to know that until that piece of equipment is delivered. Okay. And the last piece or the uh, second to the last piece is the install date. What date are you installing it? So these four pieces of information are the only things that you need outside of the PO. There's one other piece and not all manufacturers show this, but they'll give you a manufacturer's date. Okay, that's one of the requirements. Now, Train does this, but maybe Goodman, it, it, they don't have like a manufacturer date. You can Google Goodman and it will give you the code you can pick out through the serial number or the serial number, the manufacturer date, okay? So you may have to kind of Google and go online and, and see 
uh, where that manufacture date may be hidden within the serial number or wherever that may be. But uh, some of them enter the manufacturer's date. So that is all of the information that you need to create an asset. Okay, so now let's go in and let's see if we can create an asset. So I'm gonna get out of this PowerPoint and we're gonna go right into site plan. So hopefully everyone can see site plan. So right now I am over here and I'm not under tasks. There's a tab over here for assets, okay? Right now I am under a demo site. This is where we do all of our testing and everything. So let's go in and we're going to create an asset on the version. It's gonna be very similar on the mobile device. So we're gonna go in here and up here to the right, you'll see this button, add asset. So when I click add asset, this is how I'm gonna create it. Remember, you need two pieces of information to even create an asset. Notice the create asset, I can't do anything. It's not highlighted, it won't allow me. So first thing I have to do is I'm gonna type, I'm gonna go down to heating and cooling, and I'm gonna, let's start with an air handler, okay? The second piece of information that I need in order to create the asset is where is it going? So I'm gonna go down to place and I'm gonna go to building one. I'm gonna go to floor one and let's pick 109. Notice once I pick the unit number, now this is live. It will allow me to create asset. See how that lit up? So next thing is make, okay? So we're gonna say this is a good one. And notice as I, start punching in information, this name is gonna to continue to grow. And I'm gonna show you what you have to do to keep things very clean and simple, okay? Model, I'm just gonna put an ASW10 or 001. We're just gonna make up some numbers. Uh, the serial number, I am, remember that's one piece that I'm not gonna have until that piece of equipment is on site, okay? Don't worry about the asset ID. We've got the place. Um, photos we get once the piece of equipment arrives. Now, down here at the bottom are your tags. Remember, air handlers have two tags. Condensers have a tag. So first tag, I'm going to click on here. It's an air handler, and it's going to be a heat pump. Okay. The second tag is I need to know the heat source, I believe. So it's gonna be uh, an electric heat source, okay? So now I've added my tags, okay? Now we're gonna go to the spe specifications tab. Now, one of the requirements is size. You don't have to put a whole bunch. Don't tell me, you know, it's five tons, six, whatever. Just give me a number, okay? So we're gonna say this is gonna be a 2.5. It's a two and a half ton. You don't have to put ton. You don't have to put any, just give me a number. We do not require, remember looking at the SOP. I don't require the width, height, weight, doesn't matter. I don't need that information. Retailer, we know it's HD, okay? You know the purchase price. I'm just gonna put 3,500. And you know the purchase date. So we're gonna say that we purchased it today on the 7th. You, your order number is your PO number. So I'm gonna just put 3050654, okay? You know the GL code, I'm just gonna 8800. I'm just gonna punch a number in here. Manufacturer's date, we don't know until we get the piece of equipment. Installation date, we don't know until we get the piece of equipment. You have gathered everything that, and the life expectancy is not a requirement. You do not have to put that in there, okay? That's how you create an asset, okay? So I am gonna create the asset and that's it, you're done. Now, once that piece of equipment arrives on site, that is when you go get a picture, you get the manufacturer's date, you do the installation date and you get the serial number. 
So does that make sense? Is that pretty straightforward? I think, and, and I'm going to give you some more clarity around kind of the way as we go through. I really want to preface this by saying that it's really important that um, whoever, again, whoever is creating the PO creates the asset at that time. We all get busy. We all get, and I'll show you the reason later is because of warranty tracking. Okay. And we'll talk about warranties in de detail in a, in, in a few minutes. Okay. So that is how you create one on desktop. All right. So now I'm going to try, I'm going to attempt to try and do this on my iPad and show you what it looks like. So let me see if I can go in here. I'm going to share content. Um, let me see if I can stop sharing. Hey, Rob, oh, we have a I, few yeah. questions in the in the chat. Um, okay. I'm going to go through those. Uh, the first one is, um, where do you put the asset under if you're ordering for stock? What you need? I will... I I will cover that um, and show you exactly where when we do um, like final day of installation, like when you take the picture, I'll cover that. Every property, when I was going through and I demonstrated um, the place and I picked the building one, floor one, unit 109, every property has, if you look on scroll through your units, you will have what's called phase and your property name, okay? So if you're ordering equipment for stock, like I want to carry two, two tons in stock in my shop all the time, then you can do that. You just need to go in where it says unit number, go to phase and your property name and assign it to that. Okay. And then when you go and install it, what does that mean? You're going to have to change the place from phase to unit number. Okay. So if you want to order for stock, just put it under your phase and your property name. Okay. And then uh, the other question, there was another question that says, are, are they supposed to spell out the retailer so we all know who it is and not abbreviate? Um, you can do, you know, HDS, Lowe's. I mean, you don't have to pull, put the full name. Just you can... We have three suppliers, so you can put HDS, Lowe's, or Ferguson. Now, if you're contracting it out, you want to put the contractor's name. Um, can you explain why you uh, why you didn't enter anything in the warranty info? I am going to cover that under under warranties. Perfect. So, it, warranties is a real important um, piece of this puzzle. And we'll cover that here in, the, in just a second. All right. So hopefully everybody can see my iPad now. Um, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go just should look like what you would see on your phone. Okay. So I'm going to go to assets. Um, and let me make sure I've got, I am under the demo. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to hit plus and I'm going to add an asset. It's asking me for a picture first, but we get the picture, remember, when that equipment arrives. So I'm going to hit next. So again, same thing basically that you see on your desktop. You're going to enter the type. Um, so that's going to be heating and cooling, and that's going to be air handling. So I'm going to preface, preface this too. I am doing this on the demo side. Don't be alarmed if you go in to add an asset on your phone and you do not see air handler or condenser. And let me tell you why. During a recent update to Smart Manager, there have been some glitches to assets, you know, categories and, uh, and Smart Manager is currently working on getting those added. So if you go in on your phone to create an asset and you don't see that, don't be, don't panic. It's something that site plan is going to be working through and we'll get it corrected. So for now, I would say that you have to create it on desktop, but remember best practice is when I create the PO, 
I should create the asset. So I'm going to be on my computer anyhow. So I didn't want anybody to like go in on their phone right now and say, wait a minute, I don't have that. You probably won't because site plan is working through that update. Okay. So we've got uh, air handler, uh, make again, uh, I'm going to put Goodman. And again, I'm just going to model number. We're just going to enter that. And I'm just going to do an ASW. Um, and I'm going to hit done. Place. Notice my create asset is grayed out. So again, I've got to pick a building. I got to pick a floor. And I'm going to do this is going to go to 108. Now, notice, notice once I have the type and the place, it will allow me to create the asset, okay? So again, this is an air handler, so it's got two tags. It's gonna be a heat pump, um, and I have to go down and add another one for heat source is gonna be electric, okay? So I'm gonna go back to create asset. I'm gonna go to the specs tab, size. I'm gonna hit a number three. Again, I don't need to move the width, depth. Again, you can kind of see it's the same thing. It just looks a little different. Um, again, you'll enter all the retailer, purchase price, data purchase, order number. See, you're not going to have this on your mobile device. That's why I keep saying the best time to do it is when you create the PO. Okay. So same thing. Uh, the only difference is, is when you get into dates like installation date and manufacturer's date, it gives you a calendar. It looks a little bit different. So you just, you know, roll through the year. Um, so this is 24, August 7th. See, it just looks a little different. It's the same process. But I wanted to show you kind of on iPad uh, what that looks like. Okay. And then I would hit create asset and it's created. Okay, so that's what it would look like on Android, on your iPad, uh, everything, anything like that. All right, so let me see if I can get out of this and get back over. So Tim or Troy, if you have any more questions while I switch back over, we can cover those questions. Robbie. Um, Yes, Robbie, sir. it's yep. been requested that you could you run through that again and also show how you add the picture from the mobile device. So, uh, OK, let me see if I can do that since I can get into it. So I'm going to add an asset. And the first thing that it does and comes up is ask for a picture. OK. So if you're standing there at the PC equipment, or if this is installation date, the assets already created, you can go in and edit an asset too. Um, so let me let me do that. So uh, let's just pick one of these. Air handler, I'm gonna open it. I'm gonna go up here, see this little pencil icon? I'm gonna edit, and now I can edit asset. So any information within that, so if you've already created the asset and it's in the system, um, you can go in and add, add it. So see where it says add description and it's got a photo. I would click that. I would click and take a picture and I would hit next and it adds the picture. Okay. Just, just like anything else. So did that answer the question, Robert? That's how you add a picture or uh, edit an asset from a mobile device. So even once it's created, all you have to do is go in and hit the little pencil icon. So then I'm gonna just hit save the asset and it's gonna save that picture or any information that you had. So up here, just remember the pencil icon, click it. Now you can edit asset, okay? Um, that, that did take care of the question. Okay. Um, what day would you use for the purchase date if you are having a vendor supply and install? So um, that's a good question. So what was, again, what would you use? What date would you use for the purchase date if you're having a vendor supply supply and install it? 
I would it was a PO date. Or, okay, PO date. Yeah, whatever day you're creating and placing the order, that would be the purchase date. Then whenever the installer comes and, and installs the equipment, and let me preface this too. Um, if you're contracting out your, your HVAC services and you're having them provide the equipment, that's a huge miss for BH. We have negotiated pricing based on the size of our company that we get pricing, better pricing on air handlers and condensers. Okay. So best practice, I would recommend that we should be buying at least the equipment so that we get the rebates from our, our, our suppliers and it's sitting here on site and all you're paying for is the labor. Um, so keep that in mind. It's, I mean, it's okay if you're going to contract out your services, but at least purchase the equipment. So BH gets to keep those rebates uh, and we're just paying the installer um, for that. So uh, let me see if I can go back and uh, sh we'll go back to the uh, desktop version and uh, hopefully everybody can see my screen now. Any other questions so far, Tim, that you've got? Hey, Robbie, this is Kristen. Uh, yeah. I, I put this in the chat, but just wanted to kind of say it out loud too. Just another sure. item to keep in mind when we're contracting out the install and, and if they're buying the equipment. We need to also make sure we grab the serial number from them to, to be able to extend that warranty from five to 10 years for no cost. But we only have 90 days from the date that the product was ordered to be able to do that. So time's, time's of the essence. Yep, absolutely. So that's a, uh, so we're back in the mobile desktop version again of uh, Smart Manager and kind of talk a little bit about that warranty part. Those of us that have been in the industry for a while, this is a huge advantage for us. And, and let me tell you why. And let me kind of explain what the warranty process is. So we've talked about going in, creating the assets. We've complied with the Department of Engineering's requirement, all of that. Well, on top of that, what we do is Kristen and her team in strategic sourcing gets reports every month from our suppliers that says X property has purchased three air handlers and three condensers, okay? So we get that information on what you're buying every month. We then send that information to a third party and that third party actually calls every manufacturer, whether it's Goodman, Train, whoever that may be, they go in based off the purchase information that they have they go in and extend the warranty, okay? Normal warranty without extending it is typically five years, one year on labor and five years on parts. When we extend the warranty, we get 10 years. So for 10 years, the parts on that piece of equipment are covered, okay? The reason behind this whole webinar is because once that third party goes in and they apply for that warranty and it gets approved, they then go into Smart Manager and upload the warranty card. And what does that do for us as a service industry? Now, in the, in the past, you would get a service call for an HVAC system not working. You're walking up to the condenser and you have no clue whether that piece of equipment is under warranty because you don't have it in front of you. Now, with this technology, before you even walk up to the unit, you can go in there and click assets and you notice there is another tab. So if I go in here to uh, add asset, there's a third tab over here that says warranty. That warranty card would be uploaded here and you would have a uh, start date of warranty and end date. So you now walking up to a piece of equipment would know if it's under warranty. You know before you even touch that unit that if the compressor is bad at it, it's under warranty. Does that make sense? The, the issue that we're running into and the reason behind this, this webinar and this refresher class is when our third party is now going in 
to they've got the warranty and they're trying to go into smart manager to upload that warranty card there's no asset there why because we didn't create it so had they have no place to upload this extended warranty so remember there's a lot of reasons behind what we're asking but think of the power now that it puts in your hands walking up to a piece of equipment that you know it's under warranty if the compressor is bad i know the part is covered you never knew that before okay a lot of us you know are going to be changing properties excelling with our career moving up to bigger things 10 years is a long time you know so i think it's very powerful the information that we put in your hands now that's why it's important I will tell you on the most recent report, and this is why it's important, the percentage of units were not entered in site plan that I can match a warranty card for Goodman is like 84% of them cannot be uploaded because the asset wasn't created. That's a lot, okay? That means I have done everything I've applied for the warranty. Now I need to go and upload it. There's nothing to upload it to because it was never created. Okay. So that's why I say service managers, community managers, we need to work together. Whoever's creating the PO, let's go ahead and go in there at that time and create the asset. Let's make it, let's, let's put it there. And then when it comes in, remember installation date, a picture, manufacturer's date and serial number. That's what you need when it arrives, okay? Um, so a little history and, and, and then the why behind the, the warranty piece of it. Um, we know how to create an asset. Uh, we know how to do it on the mobile device. Now let's talk about at the end of the day, or for some of you, maybe it's the end of the week, you know? I need to go in and then see what am I missing? Did I not I forget something? Here's another best practice tip and that I've run into too. When that piece of equipment arrives on site, let me give you a, a little best practice. When you're taking pictures, take a picture of the um, unit number, take a picture of the air handler and do the condenser. The reason I say that is because sometimes you don't have great connectivity you know, Wi-Fi doesn't work, whatever that may be. We've, I found situations where a lot of technicians would go out and take pictures and they take five units. And then when they go back to add those pictures to the file, they, they can't remember what unit it went to. So you have duplicate serial numbers, you have duplicate, you know, whatever it may be. Get in a best practice that you may replace once a, one a month. You may replace 10 a month, okay? just get in the habit of taking a picture of the unit number, the air handler, and the condenser. So now you know where each piece of equipment goes. So if you need to upload photos or attach photos, then you've kind of uh, got a good idea. So, uh, you know, some of you may want to do this daily, but if you want to go in and see, okay, am I missing anything? And this is how as a regional manager or a facilities manager, we know what is being done correctly. I'm looking at the dashboard. If I don't see a picture here, that's a red flag. Why? Because that's a required piece. So I know all of these are incorrect because they don't have a picture. The next thing is, is the actual, you know, category. Um, so let me, I'm going to open this and show you. Remember I talked about, um, when you create an asset, so here, let me do this. I'm going to add a filter. And this is how you would do it if you're looking um, for things in what order. I'm going to go down to last modified. I'm going to add a filter. So I want to know, was it, you know, was it created this week, last week? When was it last touched? So I am just going to do what I've done today. So these are the things that I just created. By simply adding a filter by last modified, it will give you what you've done recently. And you can pick today, this week, last week, this month. But these are the ones that I, I created here. So under asset, see how it should only say 
air handler or condenser. Remember I talked about as I punch in, so I'm gonna open this and I am gonna go to up here and I'm gonna edit asset just like I would on mobile device. So notice this, it says Goodman saw air handler. It's picking up information that you're inputting through the model number and everything else. All you simply have to do is go in here, erase this backspace and hit save asset. It should only say air handler or condenser. What the platform does, it, it picks up information out of some of these categories. So to keep your data clean, it should only say air handler or condenser, okay? And that's how you edit an asset. So I can go in here and see, okay, these are ones that are last modified today. Remember, I took this one on my iPad. This one needs a picture. All I have to do is go in here and open that one. I can hit edit asset. If you're adding pictures from your phone, you can attach the files or you can do it uh, on your uh, desktop. So as a service manager at the end of the week, at the end of the day, depending on your volume, all you have to do is go into assets and create a filter by last modified. Now this one more time, I'm gonna create an add a filter and I'm gonna go down to last modified and maybe it's this week. Maybe you do it every Friday. You say, you know what? I'm gonna go in and check site plan, make sure everything's got pictures, everything's in here. There it is. So as a service manager, that's what you should be doing just to make sure that you're up to date everything is being done correctly again and i'm not sure if you know smart manager and i'll do this really quick this dashboard is customizable you can make it look any way you want to for example if i want to do assets and i want to see it over here i'm going to click and drag and drop it you can arrange this in any order you want to see it okay so right off the bat i need it needs a picture and it needs to say air handling condenser. This one is incorrect. Why? Because it says Goodman. I'm going to click it. I'm going to open it. I'm going to hit edit asset. And I'm simply going to go in here and highlight all of this backspace and save asset. So now my data is good and clean. It's going to update here shortly. And all of this is gonna say either air handler or condenser. Keep your, your stuff. Why do we do that? Is because maybe you wanna search, I can add a filter and I can uh, do it by you know certain things. And if, you're, if you, it says Goodman and train and all of this other stuff, you're not gonna see everything. Keep your data clean, air, uh, air handler or condenser. But I really hope, that this webinar went through and uh, explained a little bit the why behind assets, uh, why we have to do it, the importance between warranties and everything else, the compliance with the Department of Energy. Uh, again, you know, your best resource under this is a very, very large group, and you know, we've got a lot of people on here. You have may may have unanswered questions. Please go into BHCU. And we've got an asset tracking training, and it goes into a lot of the details step by step that I just, um, you know, went through. Uh, also, too, your regional facilities managers are very adept to smart manager and assets, and feel free to reach out to them. They're here to support you and provide you with with help. But uh, I really would like to see that our assets are getting entered. We're getting the warranties. We're extending, you know, and reducing the cost on parts because we're we're extending the warranties. There's just a huge number of factors that play into this. So hopefully today it went kind of smooth and you're able to understand um, how to create assets, how to kind of follow up at the end of the day or, or the end of the week and make sure everything is getting done. Again, if you have questions, uh, reach out to your regional facilities manager. I appreciate everybody's time today. I wish everybody the best. Have a great week and everybody uh, stay safe.